Betty Flynn was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis 30 years ago, she was determined to carry on with the life she had always known. Betty refused conventional treatments, so husband Bob researched alternative remedies. But above all, he's kept Betty right by his side. I'm just celebrating, my, well, if you call it celebrating, my 44th wedding anniversary. Um, long service, no good conduct. We've been married 44 years and uh, just been great life. Yes, you heard them. It's 44 years since Bob and Betty tied the knot and they still choose to spend as much time together as possible. We're like joined at the hip, it's terrible. <laughs> what would you like on this, Betty? That looks really nice, but did you butter both sides? I did butter both sides. Not dieting today. In their youth, Bob and Betty kept themselves super fit. They've always led an active life. We did a lot of hill walking and rock climbing. And um, when we came out to New Zealand, we started skiing and we did a lot of snow and ice stuff. This year, Betty clocks up her 30th year living with multiple sclerosis. Between us, we could pretend it wasn't there, if you know what I mean, and I don't pretend it's not there now. Approximately one New Zealander in every thousand develops MS. It's more prevalent in women from Caucasian backgrounds. The cause is still unknown, but most people with MS experience their first symptoms when they are between 20 and 40. The disease sets in gradually. It's only recently that Betty's lost her ability to walk. Well, I was diagnosed in 1978, and it probably was 10 years before that, so I was probably 28. You know, um, sort of, you know, I started tripping over my right foot, you know, sort of thing, and dropping things, very clumsy with my hands and stuff like that. MS causes the malein sheath covering the brain and spinal cord to become scarred. This then distorts or prevents the flow of messages from the brain and spinal cord to other parts of the body. And it wasn't all the time, it was just from time to time. You know, you know I, I wouldn't be able to walk properly. And... Still inseparable, Betty continues to share Bob's interests wherever she can. But in the early stages, there was an adjustment. We were in Scotland in 1975 and Betty had an attack of something or other and she couldn't walk and the next day she was OK. And then there was various other things that were going on that uh, some of them she told me about, some she kept to herself. <laughs> MS has been found to be more common with people who come from cooler climates. When Betty was given the diagnosis, she was reluctant to tell Bob. Both were afraid the illness might restrict their active lives. I've never ever felt a sick person, if you know what I mean. And I decided then that I wasn't going to be a sick person and I wasn't going to take medications. If they didn't know what was going to fix it, I won't take anything. And we've done that for 30 years now and it's been OK. Wouldn't, wouldn't recommend it for everybody, right? Yeah. Bob was thoroughly supportive of Betty's decision not to use medication. And in turn, Betty encouraged Bob to continue doing the things they'd enjoy together. Except I go fishing and skiing, and Betty doesn't do that anymore. And I think that was the hardest, toughest thing. Are you going by? No, nothing yet, nothing yet. If you play your cards right, you can catch me a cup of coffee. Over the past 30 years, Betty's life has gradually become more restricted, but she still refuses to let her condition define her. Well, one of the best things I remember hearing was a very dear friend of mine, or ours, who, who died of cancer when he was very, very young, and he, he felt so sad that the minute he got a disease, he then lost his identity and became the disease. And really, it wasn't a hard decision to think, I'm not going to be known because I've got MS. Betty was determined not to take medication. Instead, she and Bob searched for complementary therapies. Along the way, Bob discovered that a hyperbaric chamber, similar to that used by divers with the bends, might help Betty's condition. They found that regular sessions improved Betty's bladder and bowel control and reduced her pain. And we started using the chamber and that was that was great. That was just something positive we had done for ourselves. Uh, 
and uh, and she got really, I think, good good use out of it, particularly and maybe bladder control and also uh, fatigue. It was fatigue because we, I'd put her if we were going somewhere on a Saturday, I'd put she in the chamber for an hour on Thursday, and it seemed to take that time to to just kind of front up. It does something, but it's not a cure, so I don't want to know about it. Um, and then, of course, they're saying, oh, it's only mental, and I thought, well, even if it's only mental, it makes me feel better. I'm going to do it anyway. In fact, what it done was it, it allowed us to lead a normal life, whatever normal is. I'm not too sure about that sometimes. What, what are you doing on the Saturday? What well, time, it's, what it's on? 1.52. Okay. I'm on and I've got 18 minutes. Yeah. Um, 16 years on, I Betty's given up sure. using the chamber. She now takes a herbal remedy she thinks helps her just as much. With plenty of energy, Betty's able to work alongside Bob. They run a company selling health products, a business developed as a result of researching Betty's condition. You know, B Bob does the business end more than I do. I do the figure part, you know, getting bonuses and getting stuff organised that way. Uh, numbers and stuff, but he does a lot of the um, speaking to people and, and presenting it as a business. Well, basically, if you give me a pad, I'll sketch that out for right, you, okay. date-wise. Uh, As for who's the boss? Oh, we've got no bosses in here, but I listen to what she says. <laughs> At 70 and 69, Bob and Betty are still in love, and they have the same zest for life they had when they married 44 years ago. I just can't believe we've got to the age we're at and you look at yourself and you see people and think, good old fat, what's been old fat, so we can <laughs> edit that bit. Um, and then you think, God, I'm one of them too. Yeah. <laughs>